all the way from France. One for all and all for WHD wireless shenanigans made easy. Please welcome to the stage Damien and Roman. Hello Defcon. Okay, so this is the uh, last talk for today in, on this track and we are going to present you uh, something we've been working on uh, since more than two years now and this is what? Oh. As usual. Okay, so uh, let me introduce ourselves. I'm Damien, Damien Coquil from Quarkstab. I'm the maintainer of a tool called BTL, BTL Jack or BTL Jack, call it what you, how you want. Uh, this is a BLE Swiss Army, Swiss Army tool, and uh, I love reversing stuff as well on embedded systems. And this is Romain, the, the maintainer of Mirage, another BLE Swiss Army tool, but not only BLE, does uh, Zigbee and some other protocol as well. And uh, he loves cross-protocol cross attacks, and we are going to talk a bit uh, about this later in the talk. So, what is what and why we had to create this uh, framework? So basically, wireless tools are a mess. A lot of researchers did a lot of research on wireless protocols, and they create a lot of tools, different tools with different protocols and different devices and different firmwares. Uh, each firmware communicates with a host or a computer with a, a specific protocol designed by uh, each person. And basically, everyone reinvents the wheel, because why not? And if you are into, yep. If you are into wireless protocol hacking, you may have to use a lot of different tools. So for BLE, the classic tools, BTD, Jag, Mirage, uh, Gattaker, Sniffady, uh, are the best way to, to capture information and test uh, some devices. And in the end, you end up with a lot of devices. So if you want to be able to tackle with all these protocols, you need to buy at least all of these. And the problem is um, that it takes a lot of space, it costs a lot uh, as well, and most of this hardware uh, can be discontinued at any time. So if you want to, to hack some wireless protocol, there is this tiny hardware you didn't buy two years ago, and it's the uh, only hardware that is supported for hacking this specific protocol. So th that's, uh, that's a shame. And basically, this is just a waste of time. Because uh, you need to create a different, f uh, each researcher create different firmware, and uh, um, each researcher or each person hacking, trying to hack a wireless protocol uh, is going to face the same issues other people have already had before, and uh, with the same solution as well. And uh, all of this, in fact, creates fragmentation. And uh, this is uh, this is not good for us. Uh, this kind of fragmentation. So. <coughs> We uh, talked a lot together, and uh, uh, we tried to find a solution to solve this fragmentation issue. So uh, it leads us to uh, come with uh, three main ideas. So uh, the first one uh, would be to design a communication protocol for the communication between the host and uh, the hardware that would be extensible. And ideally, that would support multiple wireless protocols, multiple physical layers uh, at the same time. And of course, uh, that could be open source and easy to extend. Uh, the second uh, big idea uh, would be to uh, create a set of libraries, a framework, and basically, basically a whole ecosystem uh, that will allow uh, some, the use of uh, various uh, ready-to-use features for different hardware, different platforms, and that would be available both for the host and the firmware. And uh, the third main uh, idea we come with is uh, that for uh, these two works, uh, it must, uh, from the beginning, encourage the interoperability and the collaboration between researchers. So uh, it motivated us to build everything as open source software and to uh, heavily document both the use uh, of the tools, but also uh, its design. So uh, here comes the main uh, part uh, of WAD, of uh, this project, which is the WAD protocol. So we have several guidelines that have motivated uh, its development. 
So first, uh, it's a standardized protocol, so we, we properly defined it, everything uh, is uh, documented and explained. It's uh, generic, so it covers uh, a set of wireless capabilities that are uh, already uh, in the ecosystem. It's modular, so you can support multiple uh, wireless protocols. Uh, and uh, if you want to add more, include your own, uh, it's a protocol which is evolutive. So the protocol has been designed to be easily extended and uh, improved over time. And finally, uh, we also uh, tried to make it as user-friendly as possible. So uh, we developed a set of C, C++, and Python parsing libraries, uh, allowing to facilitate uh, its integration into uh, your firmware, uh, and so on. So another uh, key uh, idea behind WAD is uh, to offload most of the complexity from the firmware side to the uh, host side. So of course, on the firmware side, we have some CPU, uh, some memory limitations. And so the idea was uh, to keep only uh, what is uh, uh, needed, so some atomic uh, wireless primitives, uh, as basic as possible, uh, and of course, the operations that are time critical and that could not be offloaded to the host. So for example, the channel hopping, this kind of stuff. So we keep uh, a minimal logic in the firmware, and all the attacks, the protocol stacks, the packet dissectors, and so on, are implemented on the host. So finally, uh, WAD has been designed uh, not only uh, for hackers, if, any, if we are in a hacker conference, but uh, also for uh, everyone. So if you are a security researcher, uh, you can use it. If you are just a wireless uh, enthusiast and you want to control uh, your IET devices, uh, or if you are just uh, a curious user and you want to understand how uh, your fav favorite wireless toy uh, works. All right, so... Uh what is what, in fact? Uh, Roman introduced the uh, main concepts behind this, uh, this framework, but in fact, uh, technically, uh, first, the name. Because, you know, when you start a project, you get, you get to find a name, and it's always a pain in the ass to, to find something, yeah, meaningful. Uh, so, WAD uh, stands originally for wireless hacking devices, because it was uh, supposed to support a lot of uh, wireless, uh, uh, so um, a lot of devices to hack into wireless protocols. And then after having used this projects uh, during more than a year. Uh, yeah, wireless hacking for dummies is also a, a great name because it uh, makes things easier. And we are going to show that in uh, multiple demos. Uh, like Roman said, it's, it's more than a protocol uh, because de designing a protocol, a communication protocol between a host and a device, that's a thing. And this is something uh, we, we already did, uh, two of us, uh, for our respective tools. But in fact, providing a, uh, an ecosystem with uh, the protocol, all libraries in Python and in C and C++ that you can embed in your firmware and use to communicate with the host without having, uh, you know, uh, without worrying about how the data is encoded and uh, so on, this is, uh, this is a lifesaver. Uh, you, if, when you develop a firmware compatible with this uh, ecosystem, you the only thing you need to worry about is the specific code that runs and that handles all the radio frequency stuff. And uh, also, we provide a lot of tools, uh, command line interface tools, and uh, maybe some are more evol evolved and provide more features. But if you want to create own, uh, your own applications based on uh, WAD, on this ecosystem, you can do, uh, as, uh, do it as well. And you can just use the Python client library and use it. Uh, yeah, uh, it's very simple to, to develop something. From the protocol perspective, it's based on protocol buffers. So yeah, no surprise here. And um, the protocol has been thought uh, in a way that the uh, host can query the device uh, about what uh, uh, the ca device's uh, capabilities are. So basically, the, each device, a compatible device, can announce itself to the uh, wide ecosystem, and especially to the host, telling, OK, I, I support this protocol. Uh, I can do this with this protocol, packet injection, or just sniffing, scanning, anything. And the host adapts uh, the, the tools based on the uh, capabilities announced by the device. 
And this is a discovery protocol that has been included in WAD, and uh, this one is mandatory for any device. Uh, you can have uh, uh, some hardware handling Zigbee protocol and uh, BLE or, or even just modulation, well, modulation and demodulation as well. Uh, but in fact, you can have some, you can have main multiple protocols supported by a single device with using this uh, this system. Um, we created a lot of firmware, uh, a lot of firmware. We uh, actually we support. Uh, if you have a look at the top uh, top half of the screen, we support basically and natively four devices. Um, some of them are uh, based on Nordic semiconductor NRF52 uh, system and chips. Uh, so basically, the, there is the ESP32 W room uh, from Espressif, the Nucleo WL55, which is uh, a LoRa and the Sigfox uh, transceiver from ST Micro uh, that is supported, and uh, also yeah, I told uh, about the NRF52. But the most interesting part is that we uh, managed to create some uh, adaptation layer between WAD and the old tools, such as the uh, Yardstick one or the Uber tools. And in fact, we, we, ca we can use all these old devices, if you can say, with WAD. And this is totally transparent for you. So it's uh, just, it appears like a classic WAD tool or WAD device, and you can use it to do whatever you want. The WAD protocol supports a lot of uh, modulations, uh, file layers, and other protocols. So basically, this is the FSK, GFSK, MSK modulation on the f uh, physical layer. Uh, so you can do demodulate and modulate signals using a specific device. And uh, obviously, the BLE protocol, Zigbee, and so on are also supported. Uh, based on some previous research we made, Romain uh, and I, we also added into Word the result of this research. So Romain published in uh, 2021 uh, the Wasabi uh, attack. So basically, this is an attack on, uh, or not an attack, this is uh, just a uh, a, a way to divert the uh, radio transceiver from an NRF52 uh, system and chip to to make it able to sniff and uh, inject Zigbee packets. And uh, last year we presented uh, also uh, some uh, research at Wood, uh, um, which is basically how to turn an ESP32 into a, uh, a device uh, that can sniff and inject raw PDUs in Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, communication. So yeah, this uh, this is also supported in the firmware and uh, in the web protocol. Not not web protocol, but web ecosystem. Uh, if you want to add new protocols to this, uh, like Roma said, it's uh, extensible. So you can uh, just uh, modify the protocol and add what you need to to implement it. All the uh, uh, all the transition transition between these messages and so on is performed by the framework. And uh, the protocol is version as well, so it's backward compatible. If you have a device with version one, uh, ver protocol version one, it will be supported uh, as well as the device ver with the protocol version two, and so on. And uh, obviously, we hope that uh, many hackers may want to contribute to, to WAD and add new protocols we didn't think about because we maybe don't know this protocol or so on. Um, we also design our own flexible stack model. So speaking of wireless protocol, we provide a flexible stack model, sorry, uh, that is easy to modify. So basically take a, a BLE stack, you can just swap uh, a specific layer and replace it with your, one, with your own. You can develop your own stack layer and replace it in, a, in the stack. So basically you can implement some very specific behavior if you want to do test some uh, unexpected uh, behavior. This is a way to do. To do. Uh, there is a, a complete stack snapshot that is implemented from scratch uh, in, the, in this model. So for it, every protocol supported, every protocol stack we got in WAD, you can do at any time a snapshot of the whole stack, uh, save this snapshot on, the, on your disk and reload this snapshot later if you want to test uh, something on this uh, this framework. And also, this uh, all uh, flexible stack model uh, makes uh, writing unit tests very easy because you can just isolate a layer, send inputs, and check what outputs uh, came, and if it's uh, what you are expected from this layer. And um, in WAD, actually, we provide uh, multiple protocol stack. Uh, BLE for version 4, version 5 is on its way. 
euh, Logitech Unifying, euh, Anna Shock Burst from Nordic, Zigbee, RF, um, RFOC, and Lower One. So all these stacks have been uh, implemented from scratch and are flexible in a way that you can make the stack behave the way it's not really expected by the specifications. So this uh, allows uh, security research. Uh, if you want to try uh, unexpected ways uh, to, to go through the stack. And uh, if you want, just want to use the protocol as well, you can just use them and it works as expected. So this is, uh, uh, this is why Roma said it was made for uh, cyber security specialists, researchers, and also uh, just uh, the enthusiasts, wireless protocols enthusiasts, or just users. Um, and uh, uh, we also love KISS, uh, not the uh, rock band, uh, obviously, but the keep it simple, stupid uh, principle. And what provides a set of simple command tools and um, a mean to combine them, uh, to combine all these tools into, uh, in order to create more complex tools. Uh, and we also provide some full feature tools for those who want to just to experiment with a, a protocol. And um, yeah, if you are a newcomer in wireless protocol exploitation or, or just if you want to play with some protocol, you, we got you covered. Uh, just to give you an, an idea of what's going on with WAD and this uh, KISS principle, um, I don't know if it's really readable in the screen, but uh, basically we are uh, using a, a first program called WBD Connect to initiate a BLE connection onto a device. Then there is a pipe with the W Shark, which is uh, our wrapper for Wireshark, and then another pipe with WBLE Central profile. And basically, what this command does is just tells WAD to first initiate a connection to the device. Then to ask uh, the, the device its uh, BAD uh, services and characteristics, so basically an enumeration performed by the uh, WBAD central. And every packet sent between the connection and the uh, central, which is a GAT client, is monitored by Wireshark in real time. And you can compose all the tools this way. You create a processing packet chain. Uh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> Maybe I, I, I get it wrong. But um, you, you create a chain of, of packet processing, and you can do whatever you want. We, uh, we are going to show you some other tool we developed, and it allows very, some, yeah, some, a lot of flexibility you know, in the, um, what can be done with this, uh, this, uh, these things. And obviously, we also created in the framework a lot of uh, um, wrappers for creating uh, command line applications. So if you need to create uh, some command line tools or do your own tools, you, uh, you got everything you need to um, wrap the connection to the hardware and so on. Yep. Uh, the clicker. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to start with the first demo. This is a, a, a we, are, we got uh, 13 demos to, to show you what what is capable of. Uh, so the first one is the BAD exploring demo. So basically, we are, I'm going to, sh to show you the WBD central tool. So this is basically a, a GAT a client. And, uh, and what I'm going to do here is to scan devices, connect to the device, a specific device, enumerate serv the BAD services and characteristics, and write and write some data from this. So I guess, nope. OK, so the setup is just. Should be this one. So basically, we launch a scan using WBD Central. We are using a, an HCI adapter for BLE. We can get all the information, all the advertising records sent by the um, the device. Once you find your your device or target device, you can connect to it through the connect command. So this is an interactive shell provided by WBD Central. Then the connection is made, and we uh, launch a profile command to start enumerating services and characteristics. We can find, uh, we have found a device name characteristic uh, and a manuf manufacturer name character characteristics in two different services. And we're going to read the content of this characteristic using the read command. And we get everything, and uh, we can also write into uh, characteristics and subscribe for notification. The basics a GAT client can do. Oh. So this is uh, for the next demo. So the basically, this is just an example of a full feature tool uh, in WAD, and this is a very basic one. So 
Uh, second uh, full feature tool we developed uh, is a tool named uh, Zigbee and Device. Uh, the tool allows to interact with uh, Zigbee networks uh, and uh, emulate basically a Zigbee and Device. So thanks to this tool, you will be able to detect uh, the surrounding Zigbee networks uh, to join a specific network. Uh, perform all the cryptographic operation, this kind of stuff, uh, and get the network key uh, associated with the network, enumerate the devices on the network, and interact uh, with the various Zigbee devices. So uh, here you have a small demo showing a small Zigbee network um, on the camera, and you have an example of the use of this tool. So first, we perform a scan uh, operation to discover the surrounding networks. So it takes some time, but uh, finally, uh, we can see that we have one uh, Zigbee network. So let's join uh, this network and perform the association procedure. So we are able to see the network key. And now we are associated and we can uh, interact and discover the nodes in the networks and the endpoints for every node. So then uh, we have a list of clusters that allows us to uh, interact with uh, the node. And we can use the cluster command to toggle uh, a light bulb, for example, uh, toggle it off, and so on. <coughs> so, sorry, uh, we have also uh, an over tool uh, named the wet sniff, which is a generic tool, so it's a multi protocol sniffing tool. Uh, so what sniff uh, uh, works with all uh, the protocols that are supported uh, by WAD. So Zigbee, BLE, RF4C, you can even uh, directly sniff uh, PHY, uh, so a physical layer um, configured as you want. Uh, it provides different uh, output formats, so you can directly display the SCAPI packets uh, with the different fields uh, correctly dissected, uh, or directly a next dump uh, version of the packet. Uh, and it allows to uh, monitor the traffic and do various stuff like exporting data to a pickup, uh, monitoring uh, with Wireshark. So here you have uh, some uh, basic uh, use cases of uh, WhatSniff. So here we are going uh, to uh, display uh, some BLE advertisements. So here, you can see the SCAPI uh, representation. Then we can switch the format to XDump. And so here, we have the XDump version of our packets. We can uh, also uh, collect these uh, packets using uh, uh, directly the physical uh, layer of uh, Bluetooth Clean Energy. So we provide the modulation, Gaussian frequency shift keying then the deviation. Uh, we provide the frequency. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, the size uh, of the packets. And here we get a raw dump uh, straight out the demodulator output. So uh, it can be useful for specific analysis. And uh, finally, we can also, uh, for with uh, this WhatSniff tool, uh, directly export the traffic to uh, PCAP for further analysis. So here, all the traffic is simultaneously displayed on the screen and exported to a PCAP.
So, uh, an interesting uh, feature uh, of WAD is that you can combine uh, several tools uh, with pipes. So, what sniff can be chained with uh, several tools. So, for example, you can uh, use what filter that uh, may allow to apply some filtering uh, on the received packets. Uh, you can transform uh, the packets on the fly uh, if it matches a specific filter, or uh, you can also use some tools like uh, what extract uh, that may allow to extract uh, a specific uh, field uh, from the packets. So le let's go uh, for an example of that. So here it's uh, the same example with, with what sniff. And uh, we are going to pipe uh, what sniff with uh, uh, what filter. And in what filter, we are going to provide a filter to keep only a specific kind of advertisement packets, so the ad and packets. And finally, if we want uh, to extract a specific field, we can use uh, what extract. We provide the field we want to extract. So here is the BD address. And we will also export a part of the metadata, so the RSSI. And of course, you can then grab this output and provide it uh, to classical Unix tool. So uh, what sniff uh, has a lot of uh, usage, and it may even allow to perform uh, some uh, complex uh, attacks. So typically, uh, in this demo, we are going to attack an RF4C communication between a remote uh, controller and a set-top box. So uh, typically, RF4C is a lightweight variant uh, of ZigBee for remote controller. So here, you have a setup uh, with the remote controller on one side and what sniff on the other side. So here, we are performing a pairing with the remote controller. And uh, what sniff has been configured to automatically perform a brute force uh, attack. And so in the input, you can notice that the key uh, has been uh, automatically uh, derived and extracted from the communication. And the packet, uh, which is uh, normally encrypted, can be uh, decrypted uh, on the fly. So it allows to sniff the various buttons that are pressed on uh, the remote control. And uh, it uh, can also sniff Hello, the audio stream, which can be transmitted uh, using the mic of the remote controller. And uh, uh, we can even export uh, the voice command Hello, to a bad uh, WAV fail, but yeah, it's working. So, uh, next demonstration is about uh, using Wireshark to sniff uh, some traffic. So basically, uh, we showed this uh, a bit earlier, but uh, we're going to go a bit deeper in this uh, demo. So uh, we can monitor everything with Wireshark. So this example is about BD, but it's, if it could be Zigbee, or even your, if, your, if you are trying to demodulate packets through the, through the file layer, you can get it in Wireshark in real time, and you can monitor everything you're working on. If you uh, use W filter to modify your packet on the fly, you can see the result in real time with uh, this W shark. So uh, the demo is the following. I'm going to be very quick about this one. Yeah, so basically we are again connecting to a device and so on and performing uh, um, uh, services and characteristics is um, uh, enumeration. And uh, everything uh, can be monitored uh, in Wireshark while the terminal shows you the uh, results of this uh, of this operation. So this is basically uh, what Wireshark can do. And the most interesting thing is that um, we talked about uh, Gattaker and BTD Juice at the beginning of the talk. So basically, these tools are based on not on some Node.js uh, library, uh, which are not no more ma maintained at the moment. So if you want to 
perform a man in the middle attack on BLE with WAD, this is very simple because you can combine tools. You can create, for instance, if you want to you know, set up a man in the middle attack on a device uh, like Gattaker, you uh, just create a command line starting with WBAD-spawn that will spawn a device with the corresponding parameters that will mimic the target device. And then you can pipe all the packets that will go uh, from the, this uh, fake device or spoof device into Wireshark. You can, so you can monitor in real time what's going on. And then uh, once uh, the smartphone, for instance, is, uh, is connected onto the spoof device, uh, then you are going to initiate a connection in the, to the target device. And every packet sent by the smartphone uh, or, the or the target device will be uh, just forwarded as a uh, uh, as it goes, and you can monitor everything in W Shark. So this is uh, the next demo I'm going to show you uh, here. So we are setting up a uh, Gattaker-like man in the middle attack using uh, WAD, using simple tools. Again, WBD spawn. This is a very small tool, like WBD connect. And uh, we first, the system is going to spawn a spoof device that just advertise itself like the target device. And the smartphone uh, here is going to detect this device. When we initiate the connect, when we push the connect button on the, on the smartphone, then the connection to the, our spoof device is uh, initiated. We can see on Wireshark what's going on with the BAD PDUs. And if we try to read the characteristics, for instance, then all the PDUs are directly forwarded to the target device and back and forth, and we can monitor everything. With Wireshark, you can see what's going on. You can save it at a, as a pickup. And what we do here with Wireshark, you can do it with any other generic tool we develop, such as WFilter or WX, not, not WX, WFilter. And you can, if you want, make some changes into the packets using uh, some specific filters. If you want to modify the answer, uh, the um, response uh, from a read operation on the characteristic, you can do it on the fly. And you can also monitor what's going on because you can pipe W filter with W shark as well. So this this is powerful, even if this demo is not uh, really powerful. But yeah, <laughs> anyway. And if you want to emulate a BAD peripheral, you can you can use uh, the full feature W BAD perif. Uh, so basically, it goes like this. This is a command line tool you can use to just uh, spawn a BLE device and populate the device with whatever you want. So basically, you can change the name of the device, say that I'm going to create a device called DEFCON32, uh, add a service and a characteristic to the device. Um, I'm going to write the value of this characteristic as well. Uh, should be DEFCON32, I guess. And then uh, I'm going to start the device. So on the uh, right-hand side of the screen, you get the uh, screen of the smartphone. So let's start this uh, spoof device, or emulated device, to be more precise. Uh, yeah, come on. OK, so it will pop on uh, the uh, smartphone, and we can connect to it. Um, it will start the discovery process of uh, services and characteristics. There is a single service with a single characteristic. And we can read the, the content. Uh, each time we read from the smartphone the content of this characteristic, this is caught by the BADPRF uh, tool. And uh, if uh, the smartphone subscribes to notification, then it got noti notified by the, uh, the system and so on. So this is a, a good way to play with uh, uh, applications and BAD applications to mimic some device if you want to see what, happen what happens when you are modifying some, uh, some properties of this, uh, of this device. Uh, uh, in practical situation, this is not what we are going to use because it's uh, you know just a, uh, interesting when you want to play uh, with a, a device. But uh, a more interesting use is the following: uh, if you want to implement a very specific device with specific services and characteristics with a specific behavior for the characteristics, here a small example: we are going to create a battery device exposing a battery service with a battery level. Except that each time we are going to read the battery level, we will decrease the level by 10%. And it goes like this when you emulate this uh, peripheral. So basically, uh, we start the Python script that uh, instruments everything. 
the device appears on the screen, so the battery device. When the discovery goes with the services and characteristics, we get one service with one battery level characteristics. And each time I read the characteristic value, getting the percentage of uh, battery level percentage, then it is decreased. So this is just 10 lines of Python to do this. And um, we did the same with all the protocols because we are talking a lot about BLE. Uh, we got a lower one gateway implemented in uh, WAD. So if you want to create a lower one get network and get some uh, device uh, to associate with this, uh, with this um, fake network, you can do it and it works pretty well. Uh, I guess the demo will be a nightmare on these screens. So I will skip it. Um, but the media server of DEF CON had this, uh, has this demo, so if you want to have a look at it, uh, please do. But uh, I'm going to still skip this one uh, and let Romain explain the rest. Yeah. So uh, another uh, example of what you can do uh, with uh, WAD is uh, the emulation of various uh, devices. And for example, uh, you can take a proprietary protocol like Logitech Unifying, and you have a protocol stack which is implemented, and various tools that will allow to uh, perform uh, a keyboard emulation, a mouse emulation uh, for Logitech Unifying devices. So typically, here we are going to use it to perform a scan uh, operation of uh, surrounding Unifying de devices, uh, spoof. Uh, the address of a uh, mouse, and then we are going to emulate a keyboard with this address to reproduce a vulnerability uh, from mouse jack to inject an encrypted keystrokes to the computer. So here we f start by uh, using a small command line tool to perform a scan operation. It allows us to get the address of a mouse and we provide it uh, in uh, as argument of a Python script that will perform the injection. And as you can see, uh, we have a keystroke injection uh, performed and fully emulated by what? Yeah, so you can see a lot of gun. Sorry. <laughs> so, uh, we can uh, emulate a Logitech Unifying keyboard. We can also emulate a Logitech Unifying uh, dongle. Uh, and uh, on the other uh, side, on BLE, we are able to emulate a peripheral. So here comes a very useless idea, which is to uh, create a bridge, uh, which is cross-protocol between a Logitech Unifying uh, keyboard, for example, and a smartphone uh, that will be connected to uh, an emulated uh, VLE keyboard. So uh, we have a small script. You can see the screen uh, of the smartphone. And uh, you can see uh, a video with the keyboard uh, at the bottom. So first, we connect, uh, we emulate the VLE keyboard. We connect and pair the smartphone uh, with this uh, emulated BLE keyboard. And uh, once the pairing uh, is uh, successful, now we can just press some key on the Logitech unifying keyboard, and it will be forwarded uh, through the uh, BLE emulated keyboard to the smartphone. So. Completely useless, but funny. And finally, our last demo uh, is uh, uh, based on the idea that it's uh, cool that we are allowed to um, access various hardware, uh, perform uh, different operations. Uh, but it would be even cooler if you could access it over internet. So uh, we wrote a uh, Watt server that will allow uh, you to expose a Watt device uh, over TCP. And so uh, with any tool, any script, you will be able to connect uh, to this Watt uh, TCP server uh, like if it was a local device. 
and uh, uh, for example, it can be useful to build relay attacks and that kind of stuff. So uh, the in this next demo, so we are in two different uh, cities in France, and I'm exposing uh, my uh, Bluetooth dongle uh, using what server. Damien will use uh, BLE Central to connect to uh, these uh, remote devices and is able to connect to the light bulb next to me, perform a profile uh, discovery, and uh, now he will be able to uh, turn the light bulb on, turn the light bulb off, and modify uh, the color. So typically, uh, it's interesting uh, for building relay attacks. It can be interesting in uh, various experiment uh, setups. So sky is the limit here. Yeah, uh, and the uh, interesting part here is, yeah, we, again, we show it with BLE, but it can be done with any protocol as well. You can uh, accept the Logitech unifying because you are, um, we have some keeper lives that are messed up with the network. But in fact, you can once you are connected to a device, you can just discover everything, and you, it, it, yeah, it's just like uh, you are, it's the same uh, if you connect the device on your computer. So basically, it opens a, a wide range of possibility. So. Uh we are developing this project uh, since uh, a few years now, and uh, uh, it has been used uh, internally, uh, so in uh, Damien's company uh, and uh, in my research lab. So, for example, uh, one uh, intern uh, at Quark's lab, uh, Baptiste Boyer, uh, developed a BLE cat fuzzer uh, using uh, WAD that leads to uh, CV. Uh, linked to the expressive controller, uh, expressive uh, BLE stack, sorry. Uh, and uh, we also uh, used it in a research project uh, to evaluate the screaming channel attacks. So it allowed us to uh, instrument uh, the BLE protocol uh, with uh, custom uh, link layer traffic. Uh, it's also a project which is uh, already uh, heavily used in uh, some hardware CTF. So, for example, uh, this year uh, edition of uh, hardware I.O., uh, all the BLE challenges were fully emulated uh, with WAD, and WAD has also been used in a lower one uh, challenge to emulate a lower one gateway. So, to conclude this talk, uh, we uh, are releasing today uh, publicly uh, this project. So uh, it's available uh, on PIP. The documentation is available uh, on uh, read the docs. So we are going to improve uh, the documentation and the project over time. Uh, feel free to contribute to it. We have also uh, the firmware files that are available uh, on GitHub in uh, some sub uh, repositories and globally all the code uh, is available uh, on GitHub under our MIT license. So uh, of course uh, we are we uh, also uh, are making a call for contributors. So uh, feel free to uh, create compatible firmwares for uh, your preferred hardware to report any bugs, any issues you would encounter uh, on GitHub's, and if you want to help uh, us uh, by writing some documentation, by adding support for other protocols or other devices, uh, we would be uh, happy to have contributors. And if you like it, uh, spread the word and tell tell your friends. <coughs> so, uh, two last words. So, this is uh, a work we initiated two years ago. Uh, and uh, here it was a very high-level uh, presentation. Uh, so we only scratched the surface of what WAD is capable uh, of. And uh, we also want to uh, warmly thank uh, the many researchers that have uh, beta access uh, to this project and that uh, helped us and provided some uh, feedback 
uh, on it. So I won't name them all, but uh, they know. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, sorry for the small technical issues. We are ready if you have any questions.